Hello world, how's it going? Yes, fish person vlogs, you were first. That was quick. You got on before I even got on, so you even beat me. So good job there. Um, so I told you guys many times that I was going to unveil the ponds for you. So I finally got some time. Hope everybody's having a great day. It's actually pretty nice here. Everybody's at a barbecue eating good right now. I'm here working. I had lots to do, lots to catch up. And I mean, when I get an opportunity like this, especially since time has been rough for me, I'm taking it, doing it, doing the work. So hello everybody in the chat, Josh, Terry, B Stag, dirty old farmhand. All right, so let's check this out. Flip you guys over. All right, so I already took this one off. The reason why I did take this top off, this was actually overflowing, which was causing a big problem underneath my deck and keeping that wood wet. So if it stays wet, it's just going to rot away. So I had to take that off. And I ended up throwing it down in the yard, but you can see how many pieces it was missing. Now it's kind of loud in here. The AC just kicked on. We got cicadas everywhere. Like cicadas are running amok this year. But yeah, you can see how busted it up it is. That's mostly from the winter, uh, wind and everything. This one's still kind of busted up. But as you can see, there are fish. Lots of algae. Lots of algae. Now this pond it. It all runs down to a uh, sump down in the bottom. There's 5,000 watts of heat in this. I run it all year round. Go ahead and show you guys the sump, what it looks like. Hey, Squirtle. This is the cat that lives outside. Rarely see her. So she's going to be wanting some treats because she comes home when it's hungry. And no yard's complete without some yard tanks. So if you don't have any, get you one. But no, really, those don't work well, especially in the sun because the temperature swings a lot. But good for mosquito larvae, especially that green water. Here's the sump. Kind of hard to see with all the glare. Everything runs down to this sump and it comes up into these ponds. Oh, a lot of you guys out in the chat. What's up? What's up? Meow, poor girl. She's hungry. We'll get you some food. Guess we can feed her real quick. And then we'll take the top off of this. Let's feed her real quick because she only comes around like every day or so. Come on, girl. Let's get you some treats. Now, this cat and this cat always get into it, so I'm going to have to pick her up. Come on, girl. Let her know it's safe. Let's go, girl. There's a lot of hierarchy going on with when you have five cats. There you go, girl. Get you some treats. You leave her alone. He's normally a sweetheart, but the scent of her, I think she cuddles up with another cat, male cat outside, and he smells it. And yeah. He doesn't like it. All right, let's go. I'm gonna take you outside, buddy. That way she can enjoy her food in peace. Come on, let's go check out the pond. Meow. Yeah, I would give him some catnip, but I don't know, man. My cat's on catnip, but they're, like I said, their hierarchy, it could get a little crazy. So we try not to do that. I mean, having five cats, it's its a job within itself. All right. So, yeah, this thing got absolutely destroyed this winter. Granted, I did that when I first built it. But, yeah, next time I would use double wall corrugated plastic for the top. Maybe use, like, PVC as a frame. Yeah, <laughs> Lucas the cat lady, that's hilarious. <laughs> Meow. Let's see here, reading the chat. All right, now I'm gonna have to put you guys up here so I can yank this thing off of here. 
I'm gonna just throw it in the yard real quick and I will be back. Oh, well, that doesn't even work. There we go. Let me pull this off real quick, throw it in the yard. Yeah, some nasty water. I'm not planning on using that again, so I don't care if it breaks. I gotta break it down anyway. But man, the birds pooping on it, getting some nasty water in there. I wasn't really liking it. But yeah, I mean, the plants look like they're doing all right. Now, I haven't seen in this yet. There, it looks like there's a bunch of fry in there. Some orange shrimp. Hard to get a picture without the glare, too. Look at this. This must have come from the seeds of the uh, corkscrew valve or something. That's kind of wild. Our broken up stems. I think that is when the uh, corkscrew valve, it grows up a flower and it creates a long stem. So I bet when the stem starts breaking down, that's what all this is. All right, cool. And uh, some people out there sell the red uh, vowel. It's not really red vowel. It's just the color it gets. Like this is regular corkscrew vowel. There's a red leaf to it. It looks cool though. Definitely looks cool. It'd be cool if it could stay that color. Yeah, here's a long, it actually looks like it's starting to flower right now again. Here's a flower of it. See, it's on this long screen. I'll go ahead and pluck it. Yeah, because there's a bunch of them shooting up. So it's shooting up a bunch of flowers right now. Here's a long strand of it. Cool. But there was a bunch of rainbow fish in here. And I've got my water changed. Like the hose hooks up straight to it and comes out this way. And I left her running one day, got distracted by my son, and killed all the adult fish in here. So now I've got, I believe, a bunch of hybrid fry of rainbow fish. And I do not know what to do with them because hybrid rainbow fish are looked down upon big time. Well, look at this. This is cool. What is it? Oh, it all broke apart. Here we go. It's like a bush of flowered corkscrew vowel. It's actually got roots at the bottom. Look at that. I've never actually seen it connected like that. Almost looks like a grass-like grass, grass -like type plant. I don't know if you guys can see that. That is wild. I have never seen it do that. So I bet you this is maybe like a baby corkscrew vowel. That's pretty wild. All right. I hope that blue phantom placo is still in here. I don't know what kind of temperatures they can take, but yeah, the corkscrew valve in here looks great. I'm not seeing them. Wow, look at all them orange shrimp down there. Wow, look how orange that one is. See it? So the shrimp in here are definitely thriving. Definitely. There's some Rotalia, Colorado. You can see this is barely even flowing, but it's flowing, and then it goes down into there. All right, let's see, need my valve to explode like that. Yeah, there's a lot. Just about, you can get your plants to grow outside. Well, valve's real easy. Valve grows around, all around the state, so it's a really hardy plant. And I tell you what, it exploded out here absolutely exploded out here like i've got some crypt hudori down here but as you can see it's all taken over by this algae but i think it's just too much lights and too many organics i mean the fish don't mind it you saw that dwarf neon there go get into it now i'm not sure what's going on here what's been getting into this and actually especially since the top on it looks like it's been bent up even more i don't know if i'll actually run this next year just because of the power it pulls and I didn't really get into it that much. 
Granted, I didn't really like my top, but with the power and everything, it's just not, I don't know. If I utilized it more, I got enough tanks inside now that I don't really have to worry about the space so much. And also the chance and risk of getting something in the fish room, like diseases and whatnot. So, I don't know. I may shut this down. I'm still debating it. Now that I got the tops on it, I'm definitely thinking about keeping it. Because I am liking it. But you'll see here, I'm going to show you. This algae is really easy to pull out. So, it's just kind of like lake algae. There's actually a ton of corkscrew valve down in here. Wow. It is loaded. These fish are like, what in the world are going on? That water is actually colder than the other ones. I wonder if the heater's not working in there. But the fish are alive. It's the only one with really fish. So, we got a big clump of that. I just chuck it out there in the woods. It becomes part of the earth again. Do you ever fertilize your ponds? I do every once in a while. Too much light and turn down the sun. Yeah, see right here, I've got a good spot. So I got the woods over here. I get some midday sun. And then it hits the house in the evening. So it, it gets a small window of direct light and a majority of ambient light, which helps out. All right, the cloud, the sun went by in the cloud. Now we lose our glare for a little bit. That's nice. We'll be back. Hey, what's this? Oh, a little filter pad thing. Look at that, I got styrofoam floating in there. Polluted. Man, there's a lot of corkscrew valve in here. But yeah, I wanted to hop on here. I told you guys I'd do this with you guys. It's I've been holding off. Like I wanted to take this off a long time ago, but I told you guys I would do it with you guys, so I guess Lucas not big on answering live chat questions i was getting lost in that algae i was trying to read what i saw let me see i'll read a few for you oh my that is some straight up swamp thing algae for sure make a chewbacca noise with them. would there not be frying the algae you just threw uh not in this tank or this pond because these are mostly juvenile rainbow fish they are like borderline breedable. They're still kind of small. Rainbow fish take forever to grow. Can everyone not say or do anything cool for a minute? I have to take the dogs out. And some chains. McMurr Farms. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, there wasn't that many questions. I don't think I really missed any. And if I did miss some questions, throw them back at me. I mean, but yeah, ah, this thing's definitely gonna need cleaned out. And these have little outtakes. I definitely would have made these bigger. Maybe I use like a bulkhead fitting too, cause I have had to re-silicone a couple times. It's not too bad, but when your plate's full, you don't ever want that extra work. Man, this, this algae's gonna be tough. Look at this, it's all broken up. Best way to get rid of that is just water change. I'll get a hose in here and suck most of that out since there's no fish in here. It's real warm. It's kind of fun to play in. I won't lie. It's kind of fun to play in. It may look gross, but I don't know. It's not really gross. It's just plants. How many gallons is a black pond? I'm not really sure. That's a great question. I think it's like 150 or 180. Maybe more. I don't know. Glad to see you back. Yeah, glad to have you on here, Nisi. All you guys, Dean, Dwayne, Nick K, Southern Fish Keeper, Jesse Pearson. Would you PMDD kill my white wizards? Any mystery snails? Would PMDD kill my... Oh, um, is that like a planaria kind of? I'm not sure what PMDD is. At Lucas, you should make Nisi a moderator. She is always loyal and friend. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll get to it. I, they don't let you add mods on the mobile version, and I'm always on this mobile version. But definitely, Nisi's awesome. I'll mod her here. There's a couple of you guys I could mod, or I've been needing to mod. There's something magical about outside fish ponds. There is something magical. Hey, no, you can. Okay, hold on. I just accidentally pressed something, and it showed me I could add people as moderator. But yes, there's definitely something magical about fish being out in nature. They breed like crazy. They love it. The colors are absolutely amazing. Poor man's dosing drops PMDD or dry fork fruits. Um, no, they won't. If it's just fertilizer, plant fertilizer, you'll be all right. But yeah. Definitely, that's why I love the ponds. That's why I'm definitely debating whether to take them out. I know there's a chance of stuff getting in here from birds pooping, stuff like that, and maybe introducing some worms or something else, you know. And I'm actually going to build a big quarantine rack too, so I'll probably go ahead and keep it. Because like you say, yeah, it is magical something absolutely magical about fish being outside i had a hundred angels out here last year and they just look so amazing the philippine blues their colors came out like crazy it's not fun putting my hand in my pond in england it's cold yeah this uh water let's see what this is there's a temperature gauge right here there's five thousand watts of heat in here so it's it's heated all year round so I ever have to take it down. It's 80 in here. It's not even that warm out here. But, yeah. Alright, you guys asking for mods now. Let's see. I know Nisi, I told her, or I said I'd give her one, but now I'm not even seeing her comment. There we go. Oh, no, she is the moderator. I must have already did that. And Danny, where you at, Danny? Danny, Danny, Danny boy, Danny boy, Danny boy. What are your cat's names? We got Spark, we got Kitty, she's the original, and then came Sparky, and then came Squeaker, Scrunchy, and Squirt. And we, Squirt's the smallest, that's why we named her Squirt. Squeaker, she came out just meowing already and that's she always meowing and then scrunchy she had kind of scrunchy ears so that's why we named her scrunchy yeah temperature gauge working good how are the plastic bins holding up any cracks or anything no now this is after the second winter that i've had this up there hasn't been any cracks but i don't know what's causing this it's kind of weird it's really messed up it's on that side too Looks like it's hitting on that side and this side big time. I don't know if raccoons are trying to get in here. I don't know what it is. But something's been move doing that. Because that's not normal. There's actually a PVC pipe in between these to keep them from going back and forth like that. So, who knows? Could be expansion of the foam maybe. But I, I would think once that settles, they want to expand much more. Yeah, thermal expansion, maybe. But man, that's a big dent. I almost wonder if a deer tried to come up here and uh, get a drink. Because we got deer to come back in this backyard. Oh, by the way, I do got this big pond right here. It's kind of hard to see. What was that super red plant you had in your ponds? This red plant... It, it's not actually a red plant What it is it's just valve regular corkscrew valve but when it gets a lot of iron and a lot of sun it'll turn red like that or it could be a time of the season thing I'm not a hundred percent sure but here is a pond this will be coming up in the future uh, my girl Sarah she's already giving me the okay for like next project on this so i'm gonna do this up turn it into a nice koi pond sorry i got drained you can barely see it there's a lot of leaves in it
Now I may miss some questions here. I get to rambling and trying to do camera shots at the same time while reading. It's not the easiest. That could be from the plastic breaking down in the sunlight. Yeah, some UV plastic does break, or plastic does break down. That's been doing great. But I don't really think, I mean, it is all kind of facing the sun area. I had these black tubs back here. They're like the cheap black tubs you can get at Walmart. Now they ended up freezing it a little bit, cooling, and the bottom actually busted out. I don't have shoes, but oh well, it's kind of muddy. I'll go ahead and show you. So I'm gonna build a retention, I wanna build a retention wall up here. This tree's dead. Keep all this dirt up here. Have a little path, a little fire pit. But I had these ponds like things separated around here. Got a gang valve I ran over with the mower right there. This one's holding water, but a lot of them, you can see the bottom just blew out of them. Probably from all the thermal heating and cooling and stuff. But yeah, my yard needs love. I haven't had much time to be out here. Alright, let's see. Do you have dirt in that pond? No, believe it or not, I got Eco Complete in there. That's how much I love Eco Complete. So Tim is streaming at 11:30 p.m. Who's Tim? It's a new name for me. Please take a moment to like stream for Lucas. Thanks, Dean. All right, so yeah, I need to break these things down now. Can you please show us the shrimp after you have caught a few out of the tub? I want to see their color. Sorry for posting again. I'll go ahead and uh, let's see if I can't catch some, some by hand. Let's see what we can do here. Oh man, my feet are all just super muddy now. Hate it when I run over a gang valve with a mower. I know, right? Uh, happens all the time. I forgot it was out there. I've got so much airline running around this yard. It's it's different. Man, look at the, the colors on these. It's great. The sun's right there hitting it. Let me see if I can shade them a little bit. Uh, but then you get the other reflection. Okay. Bear with me, guys. I'm going to try to catch... Oh, my God. There's some orange, super great looking orange shrimp. This is what a lot of them was looking like. Now, granted, this is a female, so she's going to have a little more color. That's cool. She's like, what in the world? What is this? Like, no, I've seen humans for months. We had a fairly long winter because it started early and kind of late it ended later. I bet you why a lot of these shrimp right here are super colorful is because what they're doing is they're using this and then the underneath of it as their nursery. Like mint like some of you guys have seen my videos on safe zones and making nurseries for shrimp. I bet you that's what's going on here. Because they'll usually send the males will go out foraging and all that stuff. They're a lot like ants. It's really weird. Now, they don't have like a queen shrimp or anything that I know of. There's some females wandering around here. Alright. Well, I really don't need to spend too much more time on this, guys. Because, as I mentioned before... that I'm working on a water change system and right now I need to be spending like all my time trying to get that done because just keeping everybody safe, all the shrimp safe, all the fish safe, clean and healthy. I've got to focus all my time right now on that, which is coming along. Getting parts and pieces for it has been a big issue because I mean, I need 200 to 400 parts on a lot of items. And just finding companies and suppliers and all that just to be able to meet that demand and use the products that I need to to keep it cost effective by trying to adapt this with that and that adapt that like I haven't been going the regular route like as many of you know I kind of like to do it 
on my own and reinvent a little bit. Like, I'm not completely reinventing the wheel, but I'm kind of doing it my way and how I wanted to do it. So, I appreciate you guys all hanging out. Let me see, I'll hit up some questions here real quick. Did that shrimp actually live throughout the winter? It did, but like I said, it's heated out there. So, this pond, it did get down to 50 at one point. That's what killed all those fish so i did kill all my fish by going too cool shocking them doing a water change and that was accidental but as far as weather it all did great it all stayed up around 70 like when it got into the negative degrees real windy it did get down to like maybe 68 but not too bad not enough to kill fish but i've seen shrimp especially those neo caradenia i've seen them underneath frozen ice before crawling like the top of the ice was like glazed over with ice and then you got them just crawling real super slow underneath it and they lived it was some fire reds so shrimp are very hardy depending on where you get them to i don't i don't know i mean i guess i didn't breed that into them so if they're healthy, they're hardy, I should say that. I'm upgrading, do you think a 20 long is good size for 20 cherries? Yeah, definitely, you can fit thousands of cherries into a 20 long. Yes, I'm all happy to see you guys again too. Like, it's been, it's been a while and I, it's something I had to do. I had to prioritize my time, my family, my son. It all had to come first and then keeping the health and the water and all that up. So I had to prioritize everything and had to I had to put this on the burner. But I'm working on it and I will be back to give you guys a lot of stuff. I would do like the water change system for you guys, but I think it'll be easier to walk through it once I get it finished off and then kind of go through it that way instead of doing like step by step by step and just getting a bunch of videos where I had to throw them together. You guys have to watch this, that, and that video. But instead, we'll have a collective video for you that'll kind of show it all. Make it easier for you guys. All right. Luke just keeps a gangster. That's funny. Real OG, homie. <laughs> what is up with the Tetra Breeding Project? Haven't had to do much on that. I just haven't had time, like I said, prioritizing how's the arowana. Don't even want to talk about that. It's not good. But the disease, we've got to help back. I uh, haven't had any other deaths, so that's good. Run 5,000 watts of heat must be expensive. Yeah, being in a city, it's not too bad. But it is kind of, it's more than what a lot of these houses run themselves. So it's almost like running another house. <laughs> the beard looks fantastic after your break, Lucas. Thanks, Nick. How many shrimp do you think is in there? There's probably a 1,000 orange shrimp in there. I probably want to never sell any of them though. Come from outside, I don't know. There's, you never know what's on them. So, and I've got shrimp inside. So, we'll do it that way. All right, I think I got all your guys' questions. Hello, Short. Glad to see you at the end here, right when I'm about to bop off here. All right, guys, I appreciate you guys all hanging out. Hope you guys enjoyed. If not, well, I'll try again later. So till next time, peace and have a great day.